Hey, I'm back. What's up guys? Kevin. Um, it's been a while. My apologies. Uh, life has just been a bit crazy, but um, back with the video. Uh, today's video, as from the title, it's going to be essentially what I've been wearing during fall winter. Um, and just to give a little bit of context, I'm in Southern California. So it's not like winter winter. So a lot of the items are probably like fall items for most of the world. While in California, this is as cold as it's going to get. It's like 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm like, Ooh, it's chilly, but yeah. So I'm going to just showcase a few items in my closet that I've been wearing during this fall winter period. I guess I should start off with what I'm wearing right now. I have an APC Kanye t-shirt, my favorite t-shirt all time. Um, this is a size medium. It is a bit oversized, so I would suggest sizing down if you want something that is closer to your true size, but still slightly oversized. This size medium fits like a large slash XL. I also have like an XL size that's like a really like billowy t-shirt that I like to wear tucked in. So it gives kind of like a weird like flowy vibe. Um, and I'm also wearing my John sweatpants, my gray sweatpants. Um, I've been, this is just a good lounge pair of sweatpants. I just wear this around the house, wear it when I'm out really quickly. It's just very casual, very subtle. Um, this is a size small, so I'm about 5'8", and the size small is kind of large on me, to be honest. I think they recently re-released them, and I think they might have changed the sizing, because I actually have, um, I actually bought my girlfriend the cream pair in an extra small and I tried it on just to see the sizing. The extra small fits me more true to size um, and then I'm assuming they changed the sizing after the first time. Also they removed the back pocket because this first version has a back pocket while the new version does not. So I don't know whether or not, because like to be honest the back pocket it it's not super secure so maybe they just removed it just to like save on material or something like that. But yeah, APC Kanye t-shirt sweatpants and I guess I should start off with quote-unquote outerwear um, be right back so I have showcased this jacket before this is my Patagonia bomber jacket with fleece inner lining it's just a vintage bomber it's oversized I really like it this is probably like my most worn jacket to this date I just have to send this into Patagonia to get the zippers fixed um, mainly because the Vislon YKK zipper, it's broken as well as it doesn't have the pull tab anymore, but I'm going to try and get that one sent in. That's one of the good things about Patagonia is that like if you have an authentic Patagonia item, uh, you can just send in like a request and then they'll tell you how much it, how much I have to charge or how much they're going to charge me actually um, to get it fixed. So I'm going to get that fixed and I also have been wearing this black vintage kind of bomber jacket, but it's not like a super puffy bomber jacket. I feel like this, it's definitely more of like a darker incognito style. So when I'm wearing like a more black outfit or something with more earth tones, I think this fits really well. I'm a big fan of just plain vintage cheap outerwear because in California, it rarely gets super cold. So in the odd case that it does get kind of cold and I can't wear a hoodie, I go for like a t-shirt and like a jacket. Speaking of hoodies, here is my Jound. I believe this is the J90. Um, and then for those that don't really know, the J and the kind of like model number. So I believe I also have a black hoodie that's like the J95. So that one, it's more of a slim, slimmer cut athletic fit. While the J, is this J90 or J70? I'll, put the text up here. Um, for this guy, it's a bit more of like a looser fit. Um, I have been wearing this a decent amount. My only gripe with this is that it fits kind of large. This is a size medium. I probably should try and find a small, but this medium, it kind of has extra fabric on like the sides, almost making like a weird faux love handle on like the hoodie. Super comfortable though. The fabric is just very amazing, but the fabric is also different from both the cream crew neck that I have as well as the black hoodie that I have. The black hoodie, it's a lot thinner. Uh, the cream hoodie, it's a lot thicker. So this is like a good in between. I really like the quality of it though. 
Big fan. Guess moving on to t-shirts. First t-shirt, Uniqlo Aerosum tee. This is a good tee to just sleep in, especially when it was summer, but I like just how the material feels on my body. I like the drapiness of it. I got a size small, I believe. I believe it's a small or a medium. It's a medium, so like this is a size medium. I just like it on my body and very comfortable. California, usually warmer, but cold days, this, put on that jacket and then I'm good to go. Next up is the Uniqlo Alexander Wang t-shirts. I really, really like these t-shirts. I feel like I should have bought more, but I have like five. The white tee, and all the t-shirts actually for the Alexander Wang, I got a small one because I kind of like a little bit shorter of a cut, but it fits really nice on the chest. This, it's a bit more of a slim tee. I'm sure if you wanted something that fits a bit more oversized, obviously size up, but Nice t-shirt, I like how the neck fits, I like how the material feels. It's a bit more of like a thicker wear than the traditional Aerosm tee, but love, 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 love this. There's like small branding on the bottom, but it's not really for the branding, it's really for how good the t-shirt is for the quality and the price. This is just a black version of that tee. I've just worn these guys so many times. Most of the days that I'm just working or going outside, Alexander Wang Uniqlo t-shirt. Um, check your local Uniqlo if you are near one. I believe they're on sale. The underwear is extremely nice as well. Like, get those guys as well. Oh man, I haven't made a video in a long time. And the goddamn pants section, so. First up, I've been wearing this John Elliott chino that he had. So he had this, I think it was like twice a year, he does this big sale where a lot of pants, items, tops, jackets are over 50% off. So I, I have a hard time paying retail for John Elliott. I know it's worth the quality and I do want to support, but I always try to support when he does his like 50% off or his warehouse sales that he does in LA or anything like that. But these chinos, really nice. I like to tuck in a t-shirt with this. I think it's an interesting fit because the waist is like sort of tight and then it billows out a little bit and then it slims back down. My only gripe is that I wish the leg opening was a little bit larger because I think the leg opening, it's like in between like a six and five and a half, but like it's kind of tight at the leg. I wish it was a little bit more open, uh, but outside of that, great pair of black chinos. It's, I guess it's a, also a good, um, cheaper alternative to like a pair of like Rick Owens pants, mainly because of the drawstrings and the same sort of look of it. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the drawstrings. I end up just tying them up really quickly because I usually put a belt around these guys. Next up, I have been wearing, I know I might get some flack for this, but represent clothing smoker pants. I really like the smoker pants because I like the sort of suit pant type of look, like a, like a more formal bottom while wearing a more casual top. And I think it like plays really well. Also, I cut the bottoms and then I added like an extra stitch. So it frays at the bottom, which I really like, um, but it's not going to completely like destroy and like ride up the pants because that extra stitch really does protect it from that. Huge fan of this. My only little complaint is um, just the fabric is a little bit thin, but outside of like those days where it's like really windy, that works fine. Next up is a pair of John Elliott denim. I got these tailored. This is, I believe it's the Ronin denim, so I really like the wash. It's a very nice wash. John Elliott's quality of denim is really nice. Um, there's also a few like white paint splatter details here and there, so nothing too excessive. I did get these um, tapered though. Um, I got them tapered to like a 5.7 opening from the knee down 
not not like skin tight, but it is a bit more of a skinny, slim pair of jeans, mainly because I am a shorter guy. Uh, and I do like sort of like the slimmer silhouette, at least sometimes. Um, and I think there's a lot of versatility in these pair of pants. I also just have a Cobra buckle belt from um, one of my friend's brands. I believe it's like Havana Labs, I believe. That one always goes on either this or the John Elliott uh, chinos. I just like to pair them both like that. But very great pair of pants. I, I don't know. Like I recently lost some weight, so I would maybe go true to size or maybe even size down one because the waist does feel a little bit big on me, uh, just just in case anybody's wondering. And last but not least, woo, I'm almost dropped that. Pair of vintage Levi 501s. This is a pair that I got from my friend Dante. Shout out Dante, I'll put his Instagram as well as his vintage store on the screen somewhere. This is a pair of Levi jeans very nice light wash. It's a bit more of a regular relaxed fit, so there's no taper at all. It's a bit wider and I like this for like Air Force Ones or maybe for it going over my Jordans or anything like that. It's a very clean fit. Uh, with vintage Levi's, the only concern is that you have to either try them on or you have to like kind of be a little bit weary because the sizing's weird on a lot of different denim. This is a 32, but it fits like a 30. So that's my only thing. And I just have a coach belt on this just cause it's a reversible belt. So it's brown on one side, black on the other, and I can wear the black with any of the other pants. So really like these guys. He does a good job curating and selecting good denim. So please check them out. And onto the, oh, last but not least, Jound Cream Sweatshorts. This is a size extra small. So it's a good like lounge short. It's gets right above the knee. So I like the fit of this just for a relaxing short. And just like I said, I think it's missing the back pocket because I think they just removed it because the back pocket on the version ones that I have, they don't really hold anything very well. I usually end up just putting my wallet, my keys in the front pockets. But yeah, cream sweat shorts where these guys, when it does get a bit warmer, or when when it's just like a quick run. I like how the extra smalls fit. Lovely. So on to footwear. John Elliott Air Force Ones. I had a bit of an issue with this guy. This is actually my second time purchasing. So when they originally released at Hypefest last year, got a size seven and a half, which is my true to size Air Force One size. Way too tight sold those off and then they restocked like a month or two ago, probably two months ago now. And I got a size eight, which is my true to size. So the main reason is because the Lunar Lawn insole, so there's a zoom unit as well as a Lunar Lawn sole. This insole is absolutely massive and it has like that free sort of cut or anything like that. So this makes it extremely comfortable, but the only downside is you're going to have to go your actual true to size or size up half a size or a full size from your Air Force One size. Um, and another thing is that like I got my true to size, so I'm a size eight in like Jordans, size eight in almost everything. I got a size eight in this and it was really tight on the width. So I had to stretch it out with a wooden insole for about like a week or so. And now it fits great, but be wary. If I were to buy this again, I'd buy a side eight and a half and then just like roll with that. But great pair. I love the double layering of all the leather as well as the double tongue that it has. Um, the leather quality compared to the normal Air Force one, much better. Is it worth retail? If I remember retail was like 150 debatable um because i know well the off-white air force ones were like 150 so i think these are a better deal better design than the off-white air force ones which like rest in peace i just sold my complex con off-white air force one so but that check came in thick 
Yeah, so for the John Elliott Air Force Ones, wear these most of the time. Absolute killer shoe. Actually, before, actually, no. Let me just, so the Unions, obviously, I did a video about them a while back. I ended up selling the Storm Blue pair. Might buy them back soon, but beautiful. You guys already know. Um, great pair, Air, For or Air Jordan ones. Great pair. And a shoe that not a lot of people know about, and I get a lot of questions on, is my Air Jordan one, like the all white ones. So these are the Yin Yang Air Jordan ones, but I did do some customizing where I took off the black swoosh. I also took off the red Nike Air Tag. I almost made this like a faux jound uh, or like a faux neutral gray because it's just a simple shoe. I like how, well, I've worn this a crazy amount of time, so the sole's starting to like get yellowed, everything like that. Very, very nice pair of shoes. Um, you can probably find them for retail or underneath. Another pair that I recommend is the Sale Air Jordan 1. I'm actually trying to find a pair for a decent price now that the prices are going up. Those are probably the best quality GRs to come out in a long time, so like, Hop on that. You guys know. You guys already, like if you know, you know. If, if you know, you know. Also, cream laces. Cream laces. So, these aren't Yeezys. These are just my old Yeezy boxes. So I pulled this guy out. This is the Air Jordan 1 Chicago 1.5. So, this is the 1.5 variation, which means it has the Air Jordan 2 sole, which is infinitely more comfortable than the Air Jordan 1 sole. And I personally like the clean look of this. It's, it's inspired by a Porsche, um, the Air Jordan 2. I actually really like the Air Jordan 2. I don't know why everybody hates on it, but Air Jordan 2 sole, extremely comfortable. Air Jordan 1 upper, beautiful um, and then people are like ah, like I hate hybrids because Jordan never wore hybrids he actually wore this model in between the production of the Air Jordan 1 and the Air Jordan 2 so he did wear these these are also lighter than the Air Jordan 1 more comfortable I don't understand why people don't like it the only slight difference is that the height of this if you guys remember old Jordan 1's it's the old Jordan 1 height rather than the new higher Air Jordan 1, but still not the OG height Air, uh, Air Jordan 1. So the leather quality, it's okay. It was, um, it was per the time, leather quality wasn't that great in Jordan 1s um, before the remastering of everything, which happened like a few years ago, but good quality shoes. Where are these guys? If you guys see me wearing Chicago's, it's the 1.5s. They're relatively cheap compared to the Chicago 2015 release, so. And a pair of shoes that not a lot of people know about is the APC Nike Dunk Highs. These ones came out in 07, if I remember correctly, 07. Just a pair of wheat dunks, all wheat, suede, beautiful suede upper, leather interior, very clean shoes. If you guys can, source yourself some APC Nike collab stuff. I know that it's a little bit harder to come by right now because people are all crazy about dunks. But if you guys can, source either their free runs, their free runs are really nice, um, their dunk highs are really nice, their Air Max 1s are very nice. Just like I'm, like I just, it boggles my mind that they didn't continue to collab, but they still do a collab with like Ricardo Tishi, but. His stuff is okay too, I mean. Nike Zoom Fly 3s, you can get these for about a hundred bucks. Uh, you can, I think there's like a $20 off or Nike outlets might even have them. Zoom Fly 3, I use these as my running shoes. Um, so if you see me posting this, Zoom Fly 3. It's the purple colorway, which I think is the cheapest, but I really like it because it sort of reminds me of the fly print that they recently released, which I'm pretty sure that's what they were going for. Uh, Zoom Fly 3, compared to the Zoom Fly 2, uh, go true to size 
for the Zoom Fly 3. Um, my only little gripe is that it feels a little bit narrow, as well as if you go size up, that's why I would opt it out of the 8.5, is that the heel has this little lip, and then that lip kind of could potentially slip out, slip in, so I end up doing like a double nut up top when I'm running, so. Zoom Fly 3, I've only had like 50 miles in these so far, so it's, it's all right, it's, it's, it's lasting for me. And that is about it from me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I might make more videos. I've just been really busy with a lot of career stuff. Um, I recently graduated, working constantly, so I'll try to keep you guys updated. Um, I'm also on Instagram at kevin.img, so thank you so much, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.